It's time now for another look at the day's papers. And for that, Solange Mougin is here with us. Solange, you're beginning with some joyous news for French football fans. Yeah, and there is one image and a lot of joy in the French press today. Uh, as we can see here, the images of Kylian Mbappe uh, uh, jumping into the arms of Olivier Giroud uh, as France won 3-1 against Poland. Now, local papers like Midi Libre, which praises their strength, or... Um, L'Alsace, uh, it, it notes the brilliance of Mbappe that, that he made France a dream, while Le Dauphiné calls uh, him fantastic, and then also notes that Giroud uh, made history, uh, now we coming with his 52nd goal, uh, the highest scorer in French uh, football history. Now, for 20 minutes, the commuter daily... Um, <clears throat> Sa carton, that is a word play here on succeeding brilliantly, but also heading to the quarterfinals. Uh, for the Washington Post, uh, Mbappe is France's joyful star. Uh, they write that it, it was a night of outrageous soccer from the top young player in the world. Praising Mbappe's talent, the paper says that France is going to need his extraordinary uh, display again as it advances, and advance it will as Le Keep tells us, uh, God save notre king. It is France is advancing against and will go against England, saying sparks this past evening uh, were flying with Mbappe's two goals. Now, with longtime rivals France and England to head off in the quarterfinals, then the British press Solange is also enthusiastic about the faceoff. Yeah, and uh, there's also a face-off between papers uh, today in the British press. There is a word play here with uh, we, uh, yes, in French. Uh, Metro notes, here we go, uh, uh, as it too, uh, as England it too uh, heads to the finals. And then, yes, we can, praising here Harry Kane, can, get it, um, for the first of three uh, goals against Senegal. Now, for the, the star, the Daily Star, uh, the Three Lions is future success they're projecting here, saying, bring on the French fancy. Uh, Captain Kane, quote, is not scared of anyone, it says. Nonetheless, England does have quite the challenge in front of it as it goes up against Les Bleus, who are reigning champions. All right, we'll switch gears now, Solange. You found some articles on the possible disbanding of the Iranian morality police. Yeah, as the New York Times explains, uh, this potential, potential concession, uh, it, it would be a major one, but it remains hypothetical. For the paper's headline notes, an official suggests, and that official, the uh, attorney general, well, he isn't even in charge of the morality police. There has been no confirmation that it will be disbanded. And as we see on the Iranian paper, Iran Daily, uh, there is absolutely no mention of this on the, uh, the paper's front page today. Uh, so whether Iran is, as Le Ton puts it, uh, cornered to uh, potentially sort of let things up a little bit, uh, we'll have to see. But if it is confirmed, uh, Lorient Le Jour says that this... Lorient Le Jour says that this would be a very symbolic victory uh, for women in Iran and for the protest movement as well. It notes uh, that, that this notion, though, must still be taken with a grain of salt and skepticism. And the Iranian press protesters, they know it. The Guardian uh, says that there are th they've called for three days of strikes uh, to try and keep pressure up on the regime. We'll change gears again then, Solange, to go to South Africa, where President Cyril Ramaphosa's political future will be debated both by his party and lawmakers this week. Yeah, as the Financial Times writes, Ramaphosa's fate, it says hangs in the balance um, as the African National Congress decides whether he should still represent the, go the governing party and the country. This comes after a damning report suggested that he may have laundered money after a theft of some $500,000 from his farm. Now, for the South African paper, the Sowetan... Uh, the ANC, the African National Congress, is very divided, uh, profoundly divided, they say, um, on the issue, with many lawmakers ready to turn their back uh, on Ramaphosa, meaning an impeachment inquiry could be in the cards. Now, for uh, Business Daily... Uh, Ramaphosa, uh, uh, the tides are turning against him. Um, uh, the South African paper says that he has nowhere else to hide. A bit of a reference there to the cash that is thought to have been hidden in Ramaphosa's sofa. 
Finally, Solange, you found a couple of articles about murals, or at least about art on walls. Yeah, the first is from Slate. It explains that a robbery attempt of a mural in Ukraine that, uh, that uh, the artist, the graffiti artist Banksy did, well, that uh, attempt uh, has been foiled. Uh, the images were hailed uh, for representing the resilience of the Ukrainian people. And as we see from Forbes, the mural was, was taken off, but police managed to arrest the eight people, and the artwork was safeguarded. Now, for the second story, this one, The, the Guardian tells us, is about, about also another story about wall and art. The Guardian tells us that there's headway over the possible return of the Elgin marbles or the Parthenon sculptures. Once a part of the Parthenon, um, the fact that they reside in London is a decades, uh, has created a decades long row and controversy between the two nations. Now, the Greek paper, Tania, it broke this story and it said that four secret art negotiations have been actually going on, all hushed for about a year, and that a deal is 90% there. And it could be, they say, win-win for all. We'll wait and see. Solange Moujan with the papers. Thank you very much.